In lesson 1.1, students put drops of water on wax paper to see how water behaves, and they watch as you put a drop of food coloring into room temperature water to see what the food coloring does and what they could learn about water. The whole idea is for kids to make observations to begin to understand that matter is made up of extremely tiny particles, that the particles are attracted to one another, and that they're in motion, and that they can actually develop models to explain matter all the way down at the molecule level. The first thing the kids do is they put about five drops of water on a piece of wax paper. In this case, the wax paper is on cardstock uh, to make it a little easier to handle. And kids move the wax paper around, tilt it, and see what the water drop does. And they see that the water stays together really well. So then they take a popsicle stick and try to separate that big water drop into two drops of eh, more or less equal size. And it takes a few tries. You know, most kids are able to do it. But they realize that it's difficult to do. Uh, the water doesn't come apart easily. And the question is, why is that? What's going on down at the particle level that might cause that to happen? Then they bring the drops together, and with very little effort, they come together easily. Again, the question is, why? The next thing, if you take just one drop of food coloring and add it to room temperature water and using a fairly large cup or maybe a plastic tennis ball can. Kids see that the food coloring doesn't just sink right to the bottom. It doesn't stay at the top. It doesn't stay together. It begins to spread throughout. And the question is why? You know, you could ask students, what might the water molecules be doing to cause the food coloring to spread around like that? It's not an easy question, but you want to lead kids to try to come up with an idea. Well, we have a molecular model animation to help them. And if you call these water molecules, for the purpose of chapter one, we just use little spheres as the water molecules. Later, we get into the more traditional look of water molecules in chapter two. But for here, we see that the molecules are close together and we say they're attracted to each other, that's why they're close together, and that they're moving past one another, they're in motion. Those are two big ideas in Chapter 1, Lesson 1, is that uh, the particles of a liquid are attracted to each other, and that they're in constant motion. And this helps to explain some of what students saw. Since the particles are attracted to each other, they stayed together well when they were on the wax paper, they were hard to pull apart. Since they're in motion, you can imagine that if you put a drop of food coloring in here, that these water molecules would knock the food coloring particles all around and they would eventually spread out. So it's a way of getting kids to understand their macroscopic observations using this particle level model. Also, on the student activity sheet, students are given the opportunity to draw circles to represent the water molecules and to use motion lines to represent the idea that they're in motion. If you want to take a closer look at maybe the kind of drawings the kids might come up with, there's teacher background information at this link right here that you can look at and it'll show you the kind of drawings the students might produce on the student activity sheet. Now if you're in an NGSS state, there's a performance expectation, MSPS 1.4, which says develop a model that predicts and describes changes in particle motion, temperature, and state of a pure substance when thermal energy is added or removed. Now, Lesson 1.1 it doesn't achieve that whole performance expectation, but it lays a foundation for future lessons and future chapters to sort of flush out that performance expectation. In fact, if you look at the different dimensions in the foundation boxes that make up the performance expectation, we have science and engineering practices, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts. And you can see that the lesson 1.1 fits pretty well here. The students develop a model to predict or describe phenomena. They definitely do that. This idea that gases or liquids are made of molecules that move relative to each other and that they're in contact with each other. In this case, we're just dealing with liquids, but it begins to get kids thinking about the particle level of matter. And for cause and effect, the idea that if the effect is that the water drops stayed together, the cause was that water molecules are attracted to each other. If the effect was that the uh, food coloring moved throughout the water, the cause was that water molecules are in motion. 
So you can get to a lot of these ideas beginning with chapter one, lesson one. So good luck if you try the lesson and we'll see you next time.